This will be video number nine of the Aggregate Demand and Aggregate Supply series, which is unit 2.2 of the IB uh, Macroeconomics Syllabus. Uh, this is video number nine, and in this video I will talk about equilibrium in the new classical slash monetarist model. So we'll look at macroeconomic equilibrium in this specific model. The learning outcomes for this video, we're going to explain using a diagram the determination of long-run equilibrium indicating that long-run equilibrium occurs at the full employment level output. We're also going to explain why in the monetarist neoclassical approach there may be short-term fluctuations in output, but the economy will always return to full employment level of output in the long run. Then we're going to examine using diagrams the impact of changes in the long-run equilibrium. So let's get started. Uh, when it comes to the uh, monetarist or the new classical model, uh, we have to distinguish between when the economy is experiencing its macroeconomic short-run equilibrium versus its macroeconomic long-run equilibrium. Uh, it's very important to distinguish between both. Remember, in macroeconomic analysis, the short-run is the period of time where the prices of the factors of production, uh, specifically the wages for labor, are fixed. They do not change. In the long run, um, on the other hand, uh, things are more flexible and they do change. So, if an economy is experiencing both its short-run equilibrium and its long-run equilibrium, all three curves will intersect. So, when the aggregate demand curve intersects the short-run aggregate supply curve as well as the long-run aggregate supply curve, we say that this economy is at both its short-run and long-run equilibrium. Okay, the output produced, okay, so what does that mean in, 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 in words? It means the output produced by the economy, which is represented by the short-run aggregate supply curve, is exactly equal to the total demand in the economy, which is represented by the aggregate demand curve, and also the economy is at its full employment level of output, which is represented by the long-run aggregate supply curve. And so there is no reason for producers to change their levels of output. Because aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply, there is no upward or downward pressure on the average price level. In other words, there is no inflationary or deflationary pressure. As long as nothing changes to influence aggregate demand and supply, the economy rests at this equilibrium. Now, obviously, that's a situation that's quite far-fetched and sounds almost too good to be true. Uh, more often than not, the economy is at this equilibrium. So let's have a look um, at what that um, entails. So we'll assume the economy began at equilibrium, which is the intersection of the three curves um, right here. And let's assume there has been an initial change. Uh, in the short run, aggregate demand has increased. So an initial change or the short run, aggregate demand has increased. Okay, aggregate demand increases may be due to the government cutting taxes or increasing government spending. But the point is the aggregate demand curve will shift to the right, to AD1, from AD to AD1. What will happen is that the economy will experience a temporary inflationary gap where the level of output, Y2, level of output over here, will, be, um, will go beyond the uh, full employment level of output. And this will cause the average price level, uh, average price level um, to rise from P1 to P2. Uh, in this case, there's a short-run uh, e equilibrium because the short-run aggregate supply curve intersects the aggregate demand curve at a new point, but there is long-run disequilibrium. So while there's a short-run equilibrium where the SRAS and AD curves intersect, um, there's a long-run disequilibrium. So what would happen? What would happen is that in the long run, due to the rise in the average price level caused by the increase in aggregate demand and the fact that the economy is operating beyond its potential output or beyond its full employment level, costs of production will begin to rise. And so in the long run, the short run aggregate supply curve will shift to the left from SRAS to SRAS1. And this will bring the economy back to the full employment level of output, which is YFE, at an even higher price level, which is P3. So initially, 
you have um, a, an inflationary gap, which is the gap between the full employment level of output and the actual output here. That's an inflationary um, uh, gap. Initially, we will have that inflationary gap, which will put the economy in sort of a long-run disequilibrium. This will cause the average price level to rise, which means the costs of production will rise, and eventually short-run aggregate supply will shift to the left, bringing the economy to a new long-run equilibrium, um, the intersection of the three curves right here. Now, what if the opposite happens? What if the initial change was a decrease in aggregate demand? So say, for example, there's an initial change where aggregate demand decreases, maybe due to loss of consumer and business confidence. There's um, an uncertain political situation and consumers and businesses have lost confidence in the economy. The aggregate demand curve will shift from AD to AD1. It will shift to the left. So aggregate demand curve shifts to the left. Average price level begins to fall from P1 um, to P2. Okay, the economy experiences a deflationary gap where actual output, Y2, is actually less than the potential output or the full employment level of output, YFE. Uh, now, again, there's a new short-run equilibrium where um, AD1 intersects short-run aggregate supply curve, but the economy is operating below its full employment level of output. It's experiencing what economists refer to as a deflationary gap, the gap between um, Y2 and YFE. Now, in the long run, what would happen is that due to the fall in the average price level, the costs of production also begin to fall. And so the short-run aggregate supply will increase from SRAS to SRAS1, bringing the economy back to its full employment level of output, YFE, at an even lower price level, which is P3. So the monetarists or the new classicals believe that even if there are short-term fluctuations in the economy, in the long run, um, the economy will always automatically adjust and move to its long run equilibrium, uh, which is the full employment level of output. So the new classical economists, they argue that the economy will always move automatically to its long run equilibrium. The word automatically here means without any government intervention. And this illustrates the significance that the new classical economists place on free markets. They are proponents of no government intervention in the economy. In their view, there may be a short run increase or decrease in output if there's an increase or decrease in aggregate demand. But the economy will always gravitate back towards its long run equilibrium. Therefore, while there may be short term fluctuations in output, the economy will always return to the full employment level of output in the long run. Remember this assumption because this is a very important assumption to that, that the uh, monetarists and the new classical economists believe uh, this is what happens in an economy without any government intervention. So what about changes or shifts in the long-run aggregate supply? Well, shifts in the long-run aggregate supply, they will change the long-run equilibrium and hence change the full employment level of output, YFE. Shifts in the long-run aggregate supply will represent shifts in the economy's productive capacity and can only occur in the long run and only due to changes in the quantity and or quality of the factors of production. And that's why monetarists and new classical economists are proponents of supply-side policies that increase long-run aggregate supply. An increase in the long-run aggregate supply from a new classical or a monetarist viewpoint will have an entirely favorable impact as there will be an increase in the full employment level of output from YFE1 to YFE2. You can see here the shift in the long-run aggregate supply um, has increased the productive capacity or the full employment level of output from YFE1 to YFE2. And also it leads to a fall in the price level from P1 to P2. So it, it, it reigns in inflation and it also increases the productive capacity of um, the economy. And this is why such economists are sometimes referred to as supply-side economists. According to their view, supply-side policies are the most effective way of achieving a country's macroeconomic goals. 
uh, monetarists and new classical economists are not fans of demand-side policies. They believe that they don't really affect the productive capacity of the economy. They can either be inflationary or deflationary. They just affect the price level. So for economic growth to happen in the long run, the government has to adopt supply-side policies, and these are the most effective way of achieving a country's macroeconomic goals. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.